John chapter 5, the verse 45. He says, Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accused you, even who? Moses, in whom you trust. And the next verse will blow your mind. Are you ready for it? Move. It's, now, now, now. Let's read together as if we're in the stadium. One, two, go. Ye would have believed me for. He says, Moses wrote of who? Him. So he's telling us that Genesis to Deuteronomy was a major account testifying of Jesus. So when you're reading creation story, it's beyond creation. In the creation story, the Bible says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Perfection. He says, now in the next verse, he says, what? What's the next verse? The earth was without form and void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And God said, what? Let there be light. And there was light. Guess what? If you read the Bible further, he says, and God saw the light and it was good. And God separated what? The light from darkness and called the light day and called the darkness night. Genesis 1 1, he says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In prophetic language, he was talking of perfect man. And the earth was without form, talking of the fall of man, chaotic. Man fell. What was the solution to that fall and chaos? Let there be light. Who is the light? Jesus. How do I know that? 2 Corinthians chapter um, 4, the verse 6. Look at something there. Look. <laughs> For God, who commanded what? Light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts. To give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. So the light of Genesis was not the sun. The light of Genesis was the son of God. And he called that light that appeared the face of Jesus. My goodness. So hear me. So that light of Genesis was Jesus and the power of the gospel. That is why he said in 2 Corinthians 4.4 4, If our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. So Genesis 1 light was Christ. It was the gospel. That is why God said the light was good. That's why the gospel is good news. And guess what? When the light came, when God said it was good, guess what God did? He did what? Separated what? The light from? Let's go into the Bible. Open your Bible. Open your Bible. Now, look look, look at uh, uh, the verse 4. Are you there? And God did what? Saw the light and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And called the light what? day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day now interesting so do you see when the light came the light separated light from darkness when the gospel comes those who believe are separated from those who don't believe so as the light and darkness is separated in genesis prophetically those in the light and those in darkness are separated and guess what he called the light what day and the night uh, and the darkness what Come with me to the book of Romans, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, the verse 5. This will shock you that it's in your Bible. This will shock you that's in your Bible. Now look, look. He says, Ye are all the children of light, the children of the day. And we are not of the night, nor of darkness. Day and night is a prophetic testimony of believers and non-believers. You are called light, you are called day. He says, you are children of the day. Interesting, the same book of Genesis chapter 1. Now, now look at um, Genesis 1, the verse 16. It's going to shock you. It says, Moses wrote of who? He wrote of who? Him. Look, now look. He says, God made what? Two what? Great lights. The greater light to rule the day. If you have prophetic and spiritual intelligence, you should know who is the day by now. And the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Now, who is they? The believer. Who is night? He says, God made how many lights? Two great lights. One light rules the day. The other rules the night. What he's telling us is Christ. We are the day. 
Christ is the greater light. He's the head of the church. The, the lesser light is we because we are the moon. The sun is the greater light. The moon is the reflection of the light. So Christ is the sun. The church is the moon because we reflect him. So he's saying that the sun rules the day. Believers, he's our head. And we rule the night. We rule unbelievers by preaching the gospel to them. That's how we shine our light. So hear me. When God says you should shine, he's saying that preach the gospel. I'm the light of the world. I'm shining. You must rule. Tell somebody you must rule. You must rule by preaching the gospel to people because you are the lesser light. You are the moon. So the greater light was the sun. The lesser light was the moon because it's not less because it is low quality. It's less because it is a reflection of the moon. So Christ is the head of the church, the sun. The church is the body of Christ, the moon, which reflects the sun. You know the moon reflects the sun. The moon does not have its own light. That's why we don't have our light. Our light is in him. Moses wrote of me, not me. You'll be shocked what God did on the third day. The whole earth was in water. The whole earth was in water. On the third day, the Bible says God brought out the earth from the waters. And after that, grass began to grow. This is interesting. Do you know that that earth was representing the body of Jesus? It was in the waters, the body of Christ. Through death, he was in hell, death. On the third day, God called the earth like on the third day, God resurrected his son. The moment the earth surfaced, grass began to grow. The moment Christ resurrected from the dead, life began to come out. And you are part of those he gave life. God created Adam and Eve on the same day. They were in God. In Genesis 2, 7, God breathed into the nostrils of the physical man, man and woman. So when Adam was walking because Eve was in Adam, Eve was in Adam walking. So when it was time for Eve to come out, God did not make Eve the way he made Adam. He put Adam into deep sleep and in the deep sleep, he performed the first surgery. See, God is the greatest surgeon. He performed the first surgery in the history of time. He cut his rib and took a portion of his rib and made the woman. So the woman came from his side. Are you following this? When Adam rose up, he saw a bride and said, this is the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. And the Bible said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and the two shall become one flesh. That is why the foundation of marriage started with Christ and the church. So if you don't understand Christ and the church, how they relate, you can't understand marriage. So here is the mystery. We were chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world. Just like Adam, Eve was in Adam when Adam was walking. The church was in Christ when Christ was walking. When it was time for Eve to come out, have you noticed that God put Adam to what? Deep sleep. Go and check the Hebrew word. The word deep sleep means death. The sleep of Adam was the death of Christ. And when he died, guess what? God performed, when he slept, God performed a surgery where? When Christ died, they took a spear and pierced where? What came out? Blood and water. The church is a product of the blood of Jesus. When Adam rose, he saw a bride. When Christ rose from the dead, he saw a bride. So today, the Bible says we are members of his flesh, of his bones. Do you remember that Israel was thirsty? And God told Moses, What is your hand? Says the staff. Take the staff. Strike the rock. Poof. The moment Moses struck the rock the first time, what came out? Water came out. The second time, God said to Moses, Moses, you don't need to strike the rock. Speak to the rock. And Moses, out of anger, he struck it twice. Puff, puff. And God says, Moses, you have dishonored me before the people. You will not enter the promised land. You people will not understand. You will say, Moses has done God's dirty job for him. Only this one thing he did, he did not enter the promised land. The, the crime Moses committed in the spirit was a high crime. And God was not expecting a matured man like Moses to do that. The Bible tells us in the book of 1 Corinthians 10 that the rock was Christ. The first striking was his death on the cross. That Christ will be struck on the cross and what? What does water represent? Life will come to the world for them to drink and quench their thirst. So the first one was his death. The second time, you don't need to strike it again. Because for you to receive the life, you must confess, speak. Jesus as Lord to receive the life. And Moses struck it twice and God was angry because he says Christ cannot die twice. 
Moses wrote for me. So now every account you read about Moses from Genesis to Joshua. Have you noticed that Moses did not take Israel to the promised land? Who took them? Go and check the Hebrew word for Joshua. It means Yeshua, Jesus. Moses could not take them because Moses was the giver of the law. And by the law, no one can enter into rest, promised land. Israel rebelled against God. And when they rebelled, God sent venomous serpents serpent to bite them. And when they were biting them, they were dying. And, and Moses went and says, God, do something about it. God said to Moses, design a bronze serpent. Hang it on a pole. As many as will look at the bronze serpent will live. Moses did it as many as looked lived. Interesting. Jesus in John chapter 3, the verse 16. Now, you have been reading John 3, 16. But John 3, 16 comes from John 3, 14. If you don't understand John 3, 14, you can't understand John 3, 16. He says, as Moses what? Lifted up the bronze serpent, Numbers 21, in the wilderness, so must the son of man be be what? Be what? So the bronze serpent in Numbers 1, 21, was representing who? Christ. Serpent signifies sin. It stinged them. They were in sin and dying in sin. So the bronze serpent, bronze in the Bible signifies judgment. So the bronze serpent on the pole was to picture that that sin was judged in bronze form. So anyone that beholds will not be judged for his sin to die. So when the bronze serpent was lifted, anyone that looked, that looking is a sign of faith. So Jesus also came, he hung on the cross so that anyone that what? Believes the poison of sin is removed and he receives life. So this is where John 3 thing came from. He says that whosoever what? Believers should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. Now look at the verse 16. For God so loved the world, telling us from the verse 14 that the bronze serpent was God's love given to Israel. 